watching. All righty, guys. By the way, attendance, guys, don't forget to do your attendance. And I've got my little doohickey here. What is this one called again? A digi root. Okay, can you guys see it? Digi root. It's a stylus for my iPad. Guys, this is probably one of the better inventions out there, okay? So we're talking about logarithms last class. We looked at the exponential functions in the form of f of x is equal to b to the x, where b is the base, okay? x is the exponent. We said if the value of b is greater than one, this would indicate an exponential growth function. However, if the value of b is less than one, but greater than zero, this would indicate an exponential decay function. All right, so let's go back to that exponential function. We can rewrite this exponential function as y equals two b to the x. If we wanted to find the inverse of the exponential function, when you're finding the inverse of an equation, we did this back in chapter two. What we did was to swap x and y. We swap x and y. And then we had to solve for y. Now guys, here's the conundrum. Y is an exponent. How in the world do we solve for y when it's in the exponent? We can't. So this is why we go to the logarithms. We use the logarithms, okay, to be able to solve for y. So therefore, I'm gonna write this down right now so you guys can remember. The logarithms basically represent the inverse of the exponential functions. How so? Here's how, guys. And I'm gonna have to go to a different page for this, okay? So the logarithms, what you have to remember is that they represent the inverse of the exponential functions. By the way, guys, most of you are familiar with the shortened version of logarithms, which is log or logs, okay? Log is the shortened version. So I'm gonna go to the next page. So going back to that little dilemma we have, where we have x equals to b to the y, and we're trying to solve for y. They need to identify parts of this. Here are the components, guys. B is the base, x is the answer, and then y, of course, is the power or the exponent. The power of the exponent. So we're gonna take this and rewrite it as a log equation. So here's how we write it. The log base b, notice the b, Right there, guys, is lower than the log. We call this a subscript. Okay, log base b of the answer, which is x, is equal to y. So essentially, the y is the power. So when you are evaluating these logs, you are looking for an exponent, guys. That's what it is. You're looking for an exponent. That's what the logs are about. Okay? So that's the basics, okay? That's how we get to the logarithms. Now, one last thing before I move on to the next part of this. This is your writing line right here. When you're writing the log, you wanna go ahead and have the log on the writing line. Then you subscript below the writing line. The x goes on the writing line. And then the y also goes on the writing line. Okay, so guys, when you write these, be very careful how you write them. Now, the next part of this is to convert from one form to the other form. So we're going to convert from exponential form, I'm gonna be reading here, to log form. So given an equation, an exponential equation, let's go ahead and convert it to a log equation. So let's say I have five to the third equals to 125. Five is the base, three is the exponent, 125 is the answer. So when you rewrite this in log form, it's gonna be log 
base, in this case, the base is five, of the answer, which is 125, is equal to the power, which is three. Okay, I'm gonna do one more, guys. Any questions? All right, here comes the next one. Four to the negative three power is equal to one over 64. So in this one right here, we have the four as the base, the negative three as the exponent, the one over 64 as the answer. So when we write this in log form, let me go ahead and use a different color here. Okay, when we write this in log form, guys, it's gonna be log base four of one over 64 is equal to a negative three. There you are. Take a moment and take this in and see if you guys have any questions. You know what? I don't have my college algebra textbook next to me, so I may have to run out and go get my, not run out, run to the living room and go get my college algebra textbook because it's not right next to me. All right, guys, I'm moving on to the next part of this, okay? Now, we're gonna do this in the reverse. So this time, we are going to convert Okay, from log to exponential form. Now, for this one right here, guys, we're going to start with something very basic. Okay, log base 2 of 16 is equal to 4. Now, here's how, here's a nice little acronym to help you remember this, this guys, okay? where you place everything, okay? So the acronym is this. This is your base, this represents your answer, and this represents your power. In other words, BAP, okay? As in base, answer, power. BAP the log. So when you rewrite this, your base is two, your power is four, and then the answer is and there you are. So we just converted this log equation to an exponential equation. Oh my God, it's Patty. Was that the yes sir guy? Huh. Hello, Hattie. Welcome. Hattie, was that you that was the yes sir guy? Hattie, is this your first time on a Zoom session? Okay. I'm guessing it is. Hi, Hattie. Can you hear me? Okay, can you say something? <laughs> All right, Hattie. If you go towards the bottom. Oh, okay. Uh, yes, I was just going to tell you, discover the chat. Perfect. All right, so you can speak to me directly into your microphone on the computer. Or you could go ahead and write things in the chat box, right? That's all you need to know. Oh, another one that people love to use, and I ask you guys to use it sometimes, is the emoticon. There's only two emoticons. Which reminds me, Eric Yoon is having a webinar this Wednesday where he invites people to ask him questions. I think I'm going to join the webinar this Wednesday and ask him, why can't we have more emoticons? We don't have enough, okay? So, in the emoticons, that's the reactions. You can do the thumbs up, which is what I use with most of you guys, okay? And then the other one is what? Uh, the applause, okay? So that's the only two emoticons you guys have. Hattie, are you the person that came in as a yes sir in the waiting room? No, yes, thumbs up. <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, no, okay, thank you, Hattie. Um, but welcome, Hattie. Uh, by the way, you missed a whole lot. Um, Elizabeth had the foresight to say, Miss Alcera, you should record this, so I recorded it. You will get a recording of it later on. Make sure you watch that recording. And I'm gonna put right next to it, must watch, okay? All right, guys, so I'm gonna move on. Number two, guys, here's the next one. This time, I'm going to do log base three of 81 
is equal to four. We're gonna convert this to a, I mean, an exponential equation. So the exponential equation, remember this is your base, it's right here. That's the answer, oh well, no, that's your power, and this is the answer. So when we rewrite this, it's gonna be three raised to the power of four equals to 81. So you have to be able to toggle between log form and exponential form, guys. So you have to know this. That's going to come into play quite a bit later on. All right. So next, we're going to talk about evaluating the logs. We might need to talk about <clears throat> the domain as well as the graphs of these functions, okay? Because I just jumped a step here. Evaluating the logs. Now, I just told you guys, the logs represent the inverse of the exponential function. And so the majority of the time when you're evaluating the logs, what you're looking for is the exponent or the power. So when you're looking for the value of a log expression, you're basically looking for an exponent or a power, guys. Now, because we're talking about exponential power, be careful. I am going to start with some easy problems, and then I'll work my way up, all right? So here comes an easy log base two of eight. This one is asking this question. Two raised to what power gives you eight? Two raised to what power gives you eight? So the answer for that one would be what, guys? Two to the what power gives you eight? Anybody? Three. Three. Mm -hmm. Very good. Okay, here comes the next one. Pick it up a little bit. Okay, this time we're going to do log base 4 of 64. As in, 4 to the what power gives you 64? 4 raised to the what power gives you 64? What's the answer, guys? Anybody? Come on. Nobody? 2. Wait, no. 2. Okay, now if you say 2, you're saying 4 squared is equal to 64. But 4 squared is, is actually four, 4 times 4. Huh? Is it 4? Is it 4? Well, if you do 4 to the 4th, you're going to get 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. Does that all multiply? 4 to the 3rd. To the 3rd. To the 3rd. See, I got it. I'm not even in the class. Wait a minute, Emily. Did you do this before? Hi, Emily. You're way ahead. Aren't you in college or something? No, I'm a junior. Emily, what? Okay. <laughs> Anyways, you've already done this, Emily. So, yes, you should be good with this. You should be uh -huh. with Lily right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> now, why is Emily trying to hijack my class? <laughs> I don't <Damn>. know. <laughs> All right, guys. I'm learning with you guys. I'm getting extra math help. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, uh -huh. what math class are you doing this year? I don't know. I, ha I honestly haven't even turned in my schedule yet. I need to turn it in. Shazam. I know, I know. I, have, I don't know. I haven't decided. Okay. Okay. All right. Back to class. Bye. <laughs> All right, Emily. Good chatting with you. Um, guys, so here's the next one. You ready? Log base five of 25. I'm making this one easy. What's the answer? Five. Come on, guys. Wait, no. <laughs> Two. Two. Very <laughs> good. You know what it is? You have to think a little differently. Normally, you guys are thinking division multiplication. You're not thinking in terms of exponents. That's the problem, okay? So most of you are looking at this and saying, oh, uh, five times what gives me 25? That's five. But this is not what we're doing. We're doing exponent. Five to the what power? Five multiplied by itself, how many times to give me 25? That's what this is about, guys. Five multiplied by itself, how many times? To get to the 25. See, that's completely different than 5 times 5 is 25. No, 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 no. Okay. All right. So let's take it up a notch. Let's see how you guys do. She's like, yeah, I'm scared. Okay. So I'll, I'll ease it on there. Okay. 
Log base six of one. What's the answer? Log base six of one. Zero. Zero. Very good, Evans. Six is zero power is equal to one. All right. Here comes the next one. Log base ew, three of one over 27. There's a fraction in there. What's the answer, guys? Three to the what power gives you one over 27? Negative three. Negative three, excellent. You know three to the third power is 27 because it's a fraction, guys. Whenever you have a frac, um, yeah, whenever you have a fraction, think of negative exponents always. Think of a negative exponent when you have those fractions in there. So negative exponents indicate a fraction. We talked about that last class. All right. So number six. Ooh, I'm loving this one already and I haven't even written it down. So guys, here it is. Log base 49 of seven equals to what? Log base 49 of seven. 49 raised to the what power gives you seven? Anybody? Come on guys, separate yourself from the rest. Give me the answer to this problem. Um. <laughs> okay, anybody? Uh, he just spoke up. I couldn't hear you. She said one half. One half. Who said that? That was Ella. You were good. Ella. Good job. Very I mean, good. I was gonna say it too. Uh, uh, I was just never mind. Okay, I'll give you a tentative. Very good. Okay, right. Evans. Tentative. I feel, I feel good now. Okay, very good. <laughs> okay, guys. So, are you starting to feel a little bit more comfortable with this? Or do you yes. need some more examples? Give me a thumbs up if you need some more examples. Okay, so no, oh, okay, Hattie says, yeah, <laughs> give me more, give me more. All right, so let me go ahead and add some additional examples. Number seven, okay. Long base four of one over 16 next. What's the answer? There's a fraction. Fractions indicate what? Negatives. Negative exponents, right? So guys, four raised to what power gives you 16? And then you change that to a negative. What would the answer be? All right, Megan, negative two, excellent. Number six, I mean, number eight, all right. Let's see how you guys do with this one. Log base 216 of six. Ooh, Miss Alcira, what the heck? All right, guys. So the question is 216 to the what power gives you six? Now, let me explain this a little further, okay? The base is larger than the answer. So this means that you're going to have a fractional exponent. So yes, Megan, it is one third. By the way, guys, we can do these on the calculator. Eventually I will show you how to do them on the calculator, but wait, I will show you later on. Okay, so here's the inner workings of these problems. Remember guys, we could change this into an exponential equation. So the exponential for this equation for this one would be 216 raised to what power gives you six? All right, now later on, we are going to be talking about some of the properties of the logs, and you will see this property, it's called the one-to-one -one property of logs, but for now, I am just going to explain it to you this way. So I am going to take the 16, the 216 and factor it into a number which has the same base as six. So in other words, when I factor 216, it factors to six times six times six. You can even do a prime factor tree for it, guys, okay? Now, what you, ooh, Shazam, I know what you guys are gonna be saying, Shazam. What you will notice is that you have six multiplied by itself three times. 
Okay, I think I want to erase this before somebody gets all upset over here because I know how finicky you guys are. So I'm erasing. Okay. So guys, six to the three X power is equal to six. Now, what you will notice is that the bases are equal to each other. So if the bases are equal to each other, that makes the powers equivalent to each other. Now, the six here has a power of one. So the bases are equal. That makes the powers equal to each other. So you take the three X, so that it equal to one, divide both sides by three. So you get X equals two, one third. And there you are. That's the inner workings of these problems. All right, guys, give me a thumbs up if you're now okay with evaluating the logs because we're going to take it up a notch. Okay, Hattie's gone. Give me some, okay, Megan's gone. Okay. It won't let me see like the bottom like of the question. Say it again. It won't let me see the bottom of the question for the one you just did. You won't let me see the bottom of the question for the one I just did. Okay. Like, I can't read the part where it says, like, log of and, like. Oh, this part down here? I no? Can't, I can't see where you're pointing to. Oh, right here. Over yeah. Here. Let me go ahead and circle. This part right here, you can't see it? It's, like, cut off halfway for me. What? Okay. Do you have something at the bottom of the screen? Can you get rid of it? It's, like, the bar that says, like, mute or, like. Like, yeah, like just get chat. rid of it. How just do you do that? Just tap into an empty space and on your screen. And it should just go away. No? It's not going away for you? No. Oh. What kind of computer do you have there, Lily? Is that a Windows? Um, it's like HP or something. Mm -hmm. oh. Mr. My family wants me to own all these Mac gadgets, okay? Yeah, so much better than the oh see mine is just disappearing okay lily i will keep that in mind as i move a move on okay i am going to make sure i don't write way at the bottom of this thing okay just for you all right guys so i saw some Ms. yes mm -hmm. can you like mute yourself and then unmute yourself because yeah. your voice is like lagging out And then unmute. Okay, are you guys good now? Yeah. Okay. All right, everybody. So here comes the next part. Properties, basic properties of logs. Basic properties of logs. Now, we're going to start with this one law base b this is number one base b of b is always equal to one so in other words if you have log base of four and log base four of four four to the what power gives you four that's what it's asking so since the base and the answer are equivalent the answer will be equal to one number two log base b of one is always equivalent to zero. In other words, any base raised to the zero power is always equal to one. Number three, for this one right here, it is log base b of b to the x power is equal to x. So in other words, and I'm gonna explain this further later on when we saw some additional properties, okay? If I were to rewrite this as an example problem, I could do this, log base four of four raised to, let's say, the fifth power. The log base four of four would cancel out to one, leaving you with five. And then the last property, basic property of logs, is very similar to number three. Actually, they're inverses of each other, okay? So you can rewrite this as, uh, I'm writing the wrong thing, okay? B to the log um, B to the X is also equal to X, right? That's the same thing as number three. Though. All right, so that's the basic properties of logs. Next, 
I have the common log properties. Now, for the common log properties, let me go ahead and give you a brief explanation of this. When we talk about the common log, we talk about log with no base. And when the log has no base, it is understood to be base 10. So basically, the common log represents log with base 10. So instead of writing log 100, you could rewrite this as log base 10 of 100. So basically, guys, <clears throat> let me rewrite this because this is a little fuzzy over here. Okay, I'm going to rewrite it. So guys, log base 10 of 100 is essentially the same thing as log 100. Now, when you have that log 100, you could go directly on the calculator and type it in, log 100, and the answer will come out. So bottom line, if you see a log with no base, the base is understood to be base 10. And so this problem is essentially asking you, 10 to the what power did you? 100. So what would the answer be for this one, guys? 10. Oh, Shazam, I'm a little disappointed. Oh, oh. it's two. You. Okay. 10 multiplied by itself having 10. It's going to take some getting used to because your brains don't typically think like this, guys. You don't think in terms of that. My brains don't things. typically think, to be honest with you. Huh? Our brains don't typically think. Okay, elaborate on that, Evan. Okay, Evan. <laughs> All right. I'm going to give you a rebuttal, but elaborate on that because I don't want to overstep. What don't, do don't worry about it. Just, just continue. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cogito. I think it's Cogito. I might have a spelling error there. Elgo Sum. And that was one of our great philosophers. Slash. Mathematician Descartes, as in the Cartesian coordinate system. Okay, the Cartesian coordinate system. Cordito go sum. What does that mean? I mentioned this to you guys before. Do you guys remember what that means? Oh, Susanna. Okay. I think, fill in the rest, guys. I think, therefore, Okay, I'm done with you guys. You guys are clearly not thinking. I think, right. therefore, I know. Huh? I think, therefore, I know. Therefore, I am. Therefore, I am. Thank I you, am. David. <laughs> what, uh... Yes, I, I know Elizabeth. David responded first, but thank you, Elizabeth. All right, guys, so here are the rules of the common log. Number one, log 10. Take a guess at this one. Log 10 is, uh-huh, talk to me guys. 10 to the what power gives you 10? Oh, she's in one. One, very good, David. Oh, no, that was Evans. Number two, log one. 10 to the what power gives you one? What's the answer? Zero. Zero, very good. Number three, log 10 to the X. We'll just simplify to x. And then number four, um, whoops, I'm, really back, I'm writing it wrong. 10 to the log x, we'll just simplify to x as well. And like always, guys, three and four are practically the same. All right, so that was the common logs. Then we're gonna move on to the natural logs. Natural logs. Now, for the natural logs, there is a button on your calculator for this. It's either lowercase ln or capital LN. All right. So when we talk about the natural log, we're looking at the log with base E. Now, last class, which was on Thursday, we talked about the base E. Uh, Lily, can you see this at the bottom? Yeah, I zoomed out so I can see it now. <laughs> That's good. That's really smart. All right. Log with base E. So guys, uh, rather than writing the log with base E, you can rewrite it as the natural log. What is base E? Base E 
is typically used in anything that has to do with exponential growth or exponential decay. And so things that are naturally occurring. When we talk about E, there it's a value just like pi on the irrational number. It stands for 2.718, which you do not need to memorize because it's on your calculator. So here are the properties of the natural laws, guys. Number one, and you have to remember this one, okay? Natural log E, because we're going to be using it very frequently. Natural log E is always equal to one. This is one of the ones you will see over and over again. So by the end of this chapter, you will know this, guys, right? Number two, this time it's natural log of one. This one is asking e to the what power gives you one? Now, remember, we've already seen two previous sets of properties. This is the third set. And the answer scheme is basically the same thing. So what's the answer, guys? Oh, come on. e to the what power gives you one? So the answer, guys, come on. Is it zero? Yes, yes, it is zero. Is it zero? Yes, it is, okay? Anything raised to zero power is equal to one to one. Now guys, next, number three, natural log of e to the x. This is another one we're going to use very frequently. Simplifies to just x. And then finally, the fourth one, e to the natural log x simplifies to x. So it's 957. All right, everyone. So these are the three basic properties of the log. So we have log properties, we have common log properties where you have the log of base 10, written without a base is base 10, and then we have the natural log properties. Okay, so I am going to pause here, guys, and go get my college algebra book. I forgot that I needed it today. So let me go ahead and grab the book because there's some great examples in the textbook. So hold on for me, all right? I'm just going to my living room. It's not that far. Sorry, Mo. Sorry. Mo, scoot over. Go to your bed. Bed, Mo. Mo, bed. Come on, Mo. Damn. Mo, go to your bed. Oh, Lord, that dog. By the way, guys, this is lesson 4-2. I'm doing with you right now. Okay, we should be done with this lesson by Friday. I'm gonna keep you until about 10.30, okay? So here comes the example problems, unless of course you need to leave for a different session, all right? <sighs> all right, guys. This is the lightning round, so get ready. Eventually, I will show you how to do these on your calculators. Remind me so I don't forget. All right, so you guys ready? Number one. All right, here it is. Log base six of the square root of six. Ooh. All right. So when we're working with the logarithms, guys, when we're looking, when we're working with the exponents, you got to be careful. When you encounter the radicals, many times you have to convert them to their fractional equivalent. So the square root is equivalent to the half power. So you can rewrite this as log base 6 of 6 to the 1 half power. So what would this one simplify to, guys? What's the answer? Mm -hmm. Oh, come on, guys. 6 to the what power gives you 6 to the 1 half? Okay, thank you, Megan. That's 1 half. By the way, guys, this is one of the properties. We're talking about the properties right now. And if you go back to the first set of properties, this is property number three. 
log base b of b to the x power just simplifies to just whatever that power is okay let's do it again because you guys are a little yeah you kind of like this no okay i'm just teasing all right guys log base two of one over the square root of two very similar to the previous one what's the difference there's a fraction when you encounter a fraction what should you be thinking about fractions indicate what kind of exponents guys Negative. Negative. Very good. So, if you wanted to, you can rewrite this as log base 2 of 1 over 2 to the 1 half power. Furthermore, you can even take this to log base 2 of 2 to the negative 1 half power. So, then the answer would be what, guys? Oh. Just like the previous one. Oh, come on, guys. What's the answer? Negative one half. Negative one half. Very good. Excellent. All right. I'm going to move on to the next part of this. Wait, wait, can you hold this for a couple, two seconds? Oh, yes, absolutely. All right. Can I move on? Yeah, we're good. Okay. So, guys, here comes the next one. Um, number three, it is log base five of five to the seventh power. What does that one simplify to? Seven. Seven. Very good. That's the same thing as the previous ones. Now, be careful with this next one. Okay. It is eight to the log base eight of 19. What's the answer for this one? Very good, Megan. That's 19. Okay, did I hear somebody say what? That sounded like you, Elizabeth D. Oh, that was me. I mean, I'm confused <laughs> too. <laughs> no, because I, was, like, I wasn't even done writing the question down. <laughs> okay, remember, this is the lightning round, Lily. <laughs> But quick, quick, quick. All right. So on this one right here, Lily, this is the fourth property of logs. And on the fourth property, basically, 8 to the log base 8 just simplifies out to 1. So just left with the 19. Okay. Later on, when we chat about some of these additional properties, I'll explain to you why. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and do this next one, guys. What's log 1,000? Log 1,000, what does that one simplify to? Okay. Is it two? Wouldn't that also be like log base 10? Uh-huh. So what's the answer? To the three. I see you, Megan. Three is the answer. 10 to the what power gives you three? Now guys, do you see any connections in there between the answer and the original problem? There's three zeros. There's three zeros, yes. So the answer is three. As in 10 multiplied by itself three times, okay? There will go three zeros to get to a thousand. All right, next one, guys. 10, log 10 to the eighth power. What is that one? Awesome, Megan said. It's eight. Remember, log 10 simplifies to one, so you're just left with the exponent, guys. So here comes the next one, number seven. Natural log one, what does that simplify to? Zero. Zero, excellent. Number eight, natural log of e to the sixth power. Remember guys, we're just using the property here. Six. Six, Check the exponent. Guys, ask me questions if you're not sure. Natural log of one over e to the seventh power. What's the answer? You can ask me questions in the box, in the chat box. Or just raise your hand and I'll answer your questions. Negative seven on this one. All right, guys. I'm about to erase all of this. So here comes the next one. 
Okay, I think that was number nine. So here comes number 10. Please let me know if I was wrong. E to the natural log 300. What is that one? 300. 300, very good. Number 11, natural log of E to the 9X. What is that one simplified to? Yes. Come on, guys. What do you mean, 9X? 9X, yes, just the power. Number 12, E to the natural log of 7X squared. What does that simplify to? My dog is snoring, people. 7X squared. 7X squared, very good. Mo, Mo, go to your bed. Did you just wake your dog up? <laughs> snoring. Number 13. 10 to the log, let me see here, square root of x. What does that one simplify to you? Anybody? Square root of x. Very good, square root of x. Awesome. Okay, so now guys, get ready for this next part, okay? Because this requires a second level of thinking log base four of x equals to negative three. It's the value of x. What's the value of x? Now, for this problem, you have to convert this log equation to an exponential equation. And remember the acronym I shared with you guys earlier. The acronym is B A P, as in back. So when we convert this into an exponential equation, it's going to be the base, which is 4, raised to the power, which is negative 3, and that's equal to x. So all you have to calculate is 4 to the negative third power. And what's 4 raised to the negative 3 power, guys? 1 over 64. 1 over 64. Very good, Evans. Very good. You guys can plug this into your calculator. If you plug it into your calculator, 4 to the negative 3 power, it's going to give you a decimal. If you've got one of those graphing calculators, hit map and then enter two times. Okay, so you can get your answer. All right? Okay, let's do another one, guys. Here's another one. What number was that, guys? Was that 14 or 15? Um, okay, uh -huh. sounds like you guys are not paying attention. I just haven't wrote down any of the numbers. Oh, okay, gotcha. By the way, guys, I am going to be sending you a video of this later on, so if you miss anything, you can always go over it. Okay, here comes the next one. Now, this next one right here is very similar to the previous problem. You want to convert this to an exponential equation. The base is 64. The exponent, the power, is 2 thirds, and this will equal to x. So 64 to the 2 thirds power simplifies to what? You can actually plug it into your calculator, guys. So what's the answer? Anybody? Oh, nobody's got this one, Shazam. Okay, now if you guys recall, the denominator is the index of the radical. Remember, fractional exponents in, um, indicate a radical. Okay, that's how we get the fractional exponents from the radicals. The numerator represents the exponent. I know I'm trying to write exponent in here somewhere. So if I were to convert this to its equivalent radical, it would be the third root of 64 raised to the second power. The third root of 64 is four. And four to the second power gives you 16. And there you are. How are you guys doing? Okay, 16, log base three of x minus one equals to two. Again, very similar to the previous two. 
So on this one, please send me this afterwards. I'm going to need it. <laughs> I will, David, I will. Uh, I'm in the process of uploading all these videos to YouTube so you guys can have easier access since Blackboard is just not cooperating. So once I get all your videos for this class uploaded, I will send all of them including the must watch video. Make sure you watch the must watch video, David, okay? All right, guys. <laughs> clickbait us? <laughs> okay, guys, so the base is three. The answer is X minus one. The power is two. So X minus one equals the base three raised to the power of two. Remember, this is the base, that's the power, and this is the answer. Okay. We're just converting it to an exponential equation, and then you solve it. X minus 1 equals to 9. Add 1 to both sides. So you get X is equal to 10. Now, Megan, I noticed where you put an 8 there. What is up with the 8? Because 10 is the correct answer. I put 10 at first, and then I thought it was wrong because I saw that X minus one and I thought the x would have been nine and then subtracted the one. Oh, okay now megan like you just said check your work that 10 is the answer if i take that 10 and i plug it back in here for x i am going to end up with log base three of nine is log base three of nine equal to two yep absolutely check your answer all right, guys, so just a couple more problems and now talk about the graphs because I cannot let this go without talking about the graphing part of this. Okay, now you guys got to quickly do these next few problems. Let's see how in tune you are with this. Log base three of log base seven of seven. What's the answer? Log base three of log base seven of seven, guys. What's the answer? <laughs> I don't know, Mr. Sir. What is the answer? Okay, Evans, you're supposed to be figuring it out. What the heck? <laughs> okay. Very good, Megan. It's zero. Hattie says zero with a question mark. <laughs> yes, Hattie, it is zero. Okay, so this one has to do with order of operations. Do what's inside the parentheses first. Log base seven of seven reduces to one. Okay, so you're left with log base three of one. Three to the what power gives you one? Zero. Excellent. Yeah. 106, guys. It is log base five of log base two of 32. Give this one a try, guys. What's the answer? Oh. <laughs> Remind me, guys, to do a word problem with you. It's going to be kind of word difficult. Problem. Anyway, the answer is one. <laughs> yes, we got to do application problems, especially in this section. Okay. So, guys, on this one, you want to simplify the log base 2 of 32. 2 to the what power gives you 32? 2 multiplied by itself. How many times to give you 32? And that would be 5. So now you're left with log base five of five. Five to the what power gives you five? That's one. Excellent. All right, I'm almost there to show you how to do this on the calculator, guys. Two more, and then I'll show you how to do it on the calculator. Log base two of log base three of 81. What's the answer? You guys hear him snoring? No. Okay. I thought you could hear him. What'd you guys get? You guys seem like you're not doing it. Okay. Megan says two. No, she said one, then two. Okay. Anybody else? 
All right, guys, this is just like the previous two. Do what's inside the parentheses first, okay? So that's gonna simplify to log base two of four. So two to the what power gives you four, it's not two. You guys are good? All right. Uh, one last one like this. Um, I don't know what numbers I was writing, guys. I got sidetracked. Log of natural log of E. Try this one right here. Isn't it just one? Zero? Oh. Is, what, um, we, uh, what is it? It's. Oh, it's zero. It's zero. Zero? Yeah. yeah. Well, let's check. Natural log E is one. So that leaves you with log one. Log one is absolutely zero. You guys are good? Yeah. All right, awesome. Um, now guys, let me see here. I think I'm gonna talk about the graphing first. Now, last time, which was last week, we looked at the exponential function. Remember, the log is the inverse of the exponential function. Last week when you did it, guys, we plugged in some values for x. We found the corresponding y values. When you plug in negative three in here, you get one eighth. If you plug in a negative two in for x, you get one fourth. If you plug in negative one, you get one half. When you plug in zero, you get one. Plug in one, you get two. Plug in two, you get four. And then plug in three, you get eight. So when you go on the xy plane to graph this, let me go ahead and use a different color right there. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and graph these points on the xy plane. Different color. Okay. So negative three, one, eight would be about here. Negative two and one fourth would be right about here. One, negative one, one half, right about here. Zero, one, one, two. And then we have two, four, which is up here. And then three will take you way up here. So when you graph the exponential function, this is what the graph looks like. That's the inverse of it. I mean, so, sorry. That's the exponential function. Now we're gonna graph the inverse. Now guys, what do you know about a graph and its inverse? Tell me something about the graph, a graph and its inverse. Anybody? Ooh. Nobody? Shazam. Okay guys, let me help you out. If we were to write the inverse of this, okay? First, we're gonna swap x and y together, okay? So this will become x equals to two to the y. And when we write it in log form, it's gonna be log base two of the answer, which is x equals to y. So this would represent the inverse of this function right here. Now, if we were looking at the chart, guys, for, the log function, which is right there, okay? And we wanted to find its inverse, we would swap x and y, swap x and y. Now, when you swap x and y, this table over here is going to become one eighth, oops, one eighth comma negative three, then you've got the coordinate point one fourth negative two, and then one half negative one. Furthermore, you've got uh, one comma zero, two comma one, four comma two. Okay, for some reason guys, this is not writing. Okay, 
one comma zero, two comma one, and then four comma two, and then finally you have eight comma three. Now we're gonna take these points and plot them on the xy plane, okay? So when we go on the xy plane, and I am going to use a different color to sketch the graph of the exponential function, I mean, uh, of the log function. So let me go ahead and use a different color here. I'm gonna use green guys, okay? So when x is 1 8, y is negative 3. In other words, it's very close to the y-axis, right about here, when x is 1 8, so right about here. When x is 1 4, y is at negative 1, so right about here. When x is uh, 1 half, y is at negative 1, which is right about here. Now, of course, when x is 1, y is at 0. When x is 2, y is at 1. When x is 4, y is at 2. And when x is 8, it looks like y is going to be at 3 way out here. So guys, when we sketch the graph, the graph is going to look something like this. Now, Going back to that question I had asked you, what do you know about the graph of a function and its inverse? What do you guys know? Oh, somebody needs to say something because I know we talked about this already. Come on, guys, you can do this. What do you know about a graph and its function? I mean, and it's inverse, I'm sorry. That's right, Megan, they are reflected, okay? They don't touch. They could touch, Hattie, come on. Yeah, that. Come on, Hattie. You know what, Hattie? You're rusted, Hattie, because I haven't seen you in a while. <laughs> okay, so Megan, going back to you, yes, they reflect. What do they reflect across the graph and its inverse, guys? Come on. Okay, let me help you out a little bit. All right, so I'm gonna do this now. I am going to sketch this diagonal line here so you guys can answer that question for me. What does a graph and its inverse reflect across? Come on, guys. Come on, you can do this. Almost there, guys. Take a guess, take a guess. Separate yourself from the pack. That's right, Megan. They reflect across the line y equals to x, the diagonal line, the identity line, as in y is x and x is y. x becomes y, y becomes x. Remember, they swap. x becomes y, y becomes x. So guys, what you will notice is that for the log function, since it's the inverse of the exponential function, the graph of the exponential function reflects over the line y equals to x to get that log function. Okay, so now here are some additional components that you need to be aware of for the graph of the log. Now, first and foremost, guys, does it have a y-intercept? Does it have a y-intercept? Yes, no, maybe. Yes. Does it have a y-intercept? Ooh, come on, guys. That's not a hard one. Just look at the graphs. Does the graph of the log function have a y-intercept? Does it ever intersect the y-axis? No. No y-intercept. And we're going to get to that as to why that is, okay? So now, guys. You will notice it has an x-intercept. So the x-intercept for this one is going to be at one comma zero. Are you guys okay with that? All right, now, what do you notice about the, um, you know what, let me just go ahead and get to it because I need to finish this up. Okay guys, this one has a vertical asymptote. Remember, the asymptote is a line a function approaches but will never get to. 
give me the equation of the vertical asymptote, guys. What's the equation of this vertical asymptote? Come on, separate yourself from the rest of the pack. Come on, give me the answer. Shazam, okay. I'm feeling a little disappointed right now. Nobody? Okay, seems like you guys are done. Oh, you were so close, Megan. It's a vertical asymptote. If it's a vertical asymptote, at, uh, Megan, which axis does it intersect? It intersects the x-axis, Hattie. Now you're getting back into the game, Hattie. So yes, x is equal to zero is the vertical asymptote. So guys, you no longer have a horizontal asymptote. You now have a vertical asymptote. Next, let's talk about the domain. The domain. All right, who's gonna give me the domain of this log function, guys? What's the domain? The domain represents what? What's the domain? Where is this function defined? Come on, guys. You know all of this. Look at the graph. Take a guess. It's okay to be wrong. You learn from your mistakes. Shazam. Negative infinity to positive infinity. All right, now Megan, think, think, think. Look at where the graph is. What quadrant is the graph in? And the quadrants that's it, that it's in, what's X in those quadrants? Okay, because if you say negative infinity, you're talking about over here and as well as over here. And I don't see the graph in quadrant two or in quadrant three, Megan. So try again. Yes, Megan, yes. So the domain represents all x's greater than zero. And if you write this in interval notation, it will go from zero up to positive infinity. So guys, this is critical right here. The domain of the exponential function is, remember, hold on a second, let me see, where am I gonna write this? Okay, I'm gonna write it right here. The domain of the exponential function is negative infinity to positive infinity, which means you can plug in positive values, negative values for x as well as zero. Now, the range of the exponential function was restricted to all x is greater than zero or from zero up to positive infinity, okay? That's for the exponential function, guys. Now, we're looking at the inverse of the exponential function, and I'm asking you, about the domain and the range of the inverse of the exponential function. So now, guys, we notice that the domain of the log function, which is the inverse of the exponential function, is all x is greater than zero, as in you're only allowed to put in positive x values. You only input positive x values into the log function, aka, another way of saying that, you can only take the log base of a positive value. So you cannot take the log base of zero. Can't do that, that's impossible, because zero is not in the domain. And you definitely cannot take the log base of a negative, because the negatives are not in the domain. All right, now here's the last part, guys. What's the range? What's the range? I'm writing it up here because I'm running out of room. What's the range? What's the range, guys? Talk to me about the range. Come on, everybody should have the range. Everybody, come on now, guys. I've got one minute to 10.30, talk to me, hurry up. Negative infinity to positive infinity. Negative infinity to positive infinity, very good. Negative infinity up to positive infinity. All right, guys, so let me highlight something here. I want you guys to tell me, what do you notice about the domain? and the range of the log function versus the domain and the range of the exponential function. What do you notice? It's the inverse or the opposite. Not opposite, talk to me in my language, okay? Talk to me, use the vocabulary, use that verbiage. Try again, Evans, use the inverse. terminology. Yes, they are inverses of each other. So the domain of the log function is the range of the exponential function and vice versa. The range of the log function is the domain of the exponential function, okay? So they are swapping 
again, x becomes y, y becomes x, guys. x becomes y, y becomes x. And just like that, I think I am done.